without going into too much detail, because I want to talk about your experiences and, and, and what you have uh, understood through them, is uh, astral travel. It sounds, uh, you know, reading, uh, especially your your latest book, uh, The Supernatural, there is a, an interesting uh, a story that you tell there about flying through your um, cabin and being going to your son's room where he's having a sleepover. And the next day, um, your son's friend apparently claims to have seen a, an alien being. You, you got two stories mixed up there, but thank you for re actually reading them, but most, most people don't. Oh. <laughs> Let me tell you the first story, which is the first part of the one you were talking about. Okay. Um, it, what happened was this. Uh, I, I do move out of my body, and I don't talk about the details of what I see very much, but suffice to say, that on this level, the people, and the what's on still on our level, and the where we we are, the physical, mostly not. There are people who couldn't couldn't ascend, and uh, they're not generally the the people you'd like to meet on. You know, you they're not good people. Wow. Okay. Uh, the ones who, when someone comes down to this level from above, from a from a more, and when I say it, I don't think of it as being like. This level is here on the, you know, on the surface and the next level is like in the stratosphere or something. It's okay. not like that. The levels are vibratory. In other words, something that is vibrating just at the edge of this reality is very dense in comparison to something that might be right here and vibrating much more quickly. Uh, and it, that's, it means it's at a different level. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. But anyway, uh, I do that some and, uh, usually try to get off this level and into other levels where I can gather information. Now, going back to the particular experience you started the first half of it that you mentioned, mm -hmm. it happened in, in uh, a cabin in upstate New York. I woke up and instead of being out of my body, my body was out of me. In other words, I was in the bed, but there was no there there. There was no Whitley. I was just, my consciousness was there, but I had no body. And I thought, holy moly, now what am I going to do? This is, you know, I've had out-of-body experiences, but now I've never had my body leave me behind. And I, I tried to move out of the room in order to find, but I was frankly terrifying i you know what, what, what in the world this was not something you'd ever read about in a book right of course, of course so i when i tried to move i was drawn downward and i was drawn into the boys bedroom which was downstairs and there my body stood the boys were both awake and andrew and his friend was having a sleepover this was in the cabin and uh they were uh, looking up at me and I was talking to the little boy, to the, to the friend. And then I was in my body and I had no idea what had been going on, what had been said, any reason. I had no understanding of why I was there. And so I said, well, good night, boys, and went back upstairs and I sat on the side of the bed for a long time thinking, I, am I not in control here? What in the world? I felt, you know, I felt like somebody else was, was running my body or could if they wanted to. It was extremely disturbing and weird. And I finally, I, I went downstairs, I had a drink and came back up and then I finally fell asleep. I mean, I didn't have a liquor, liquor drink. I, mean, I had a drink of water in, in the, in the kitchen. Finally fell asleep and, uh, woke up in the morning and I told Ann about it because at this point in our life, when these things were happening thick and fast, I always told her everything as soon as I could, as soon as it happened. We had a, a, a pact about that, that I would leave nothing out. I would tell everything. And so I told her the story as we were getting dressed, and we went downstairs. I was really wondering, you know, what would, was it a dream or a nightmare, or what the hell was it? I didn't think it could have been anything else, frankly, and neither did she. We were just laughing about it actually being a spectacularly weird nightmare. And the boy's bedroom door bursts open, and they both come running out yelling, Whitley came down through the ceiling in the middle of the night. And uh, we were just flabbergasted. Dan was laughing her head off. <laughs> and uh, I, you know, I was 
my jaw just dropped. And so then I said, I asked them, well, what happened? And they said, well, they heard this crackling noise, and I came down through the ceiling. They saw my physical body. Can you believe that? coming? And then I said, did what happened? I don't remember this very much. What happened next? And they said, well, we talked. I said, what did we say? And they couldn't remember a thing. Wow. And I said, finally, I said, well, he said, the little friend said, well, in a little while, you said goodnight. And I said, well, what did I say before that? He said, you don't remember? I said, I don't remember. Do you? He said, no, I don't. So we left it at that. Then it was time to take him home. We were in upstate New York. Uh, in uh, near Woodstock, and which is sort of more downstate to a real upstater, but anyway, 90 miles north of the city, approximately. And they lived. This boy's family summer house was in the Delaware Water Gap, which was about 70 or 80 miles south of us. So the two boys would trade time at each other's summer homes, and I took this little boy down to our meeting place in Paramus, New Jersey. There's a diner there. It's a Route 17, a big divided highway, not an interstate. And uh, I, I could see his father's truck there in the in the in the uh, parking lot of the diner. And I was going south, and I had to go over an overpass and come north a bit to get to the diner. And I know the father could see us. He he, he was sitting right there, looking right at the car. So we go off the highway. And instead of going into the overpass, which was right there, I mean, it was visible, I went right toward it. To my amazement, I found myself going down into another entirely different highway that I'd never seen before. And I said to the boy, I think I made a wrong turn. And he was just sitting there silent. And so I saw an exit ahead, and I come up, came up out of the exit. And there, I saw something pass us that was strange. It didn't look like a normal car. And I got off the exit anyway, and I was in this bizarre neighborhood. First, it had been cloudy in Paramus. Now there was, there were trees overhanging the streets, and sunlight dappling down through the trees it was clearly now a clear day. But the thing that was the most concerning was set back from the from the uh, street on lawns, there were these low kind of sandstone buildings with with bas relief on them of snakes, of serpents, and low arched doorways closed by wooden doors, and they all looked more or less the same. And it was flabbergasting. I mean. Then the little boy panics and starts trying to get out of, jump out of the car. And so I'm pushing down the automatic lock. He's pulling it up. I'm wow. pushing it down. And I'm trying like hell to find out how, how do we get out of this? What in the world has happened here? I'm just horrified. I've got this other man's child in my car and I'm, I'm in the damn twilight zone. I don't even know. I have no idea. I've never seen anything like this neighborhood in Paramus or anywhere else. I'm driving almost at random. In fact, I am driving at random. Then I see a street, and at the end of the street, there's some sunlight, open sunlight. And I drive out there onto uh, what was like a un, just sort of a rough area where there was no development. And as I drive it, it gets cloudy again, and I get to a shoulder of a road. And we get, and it's a normal highway. It's even fairly familiar. I'm not sure which one it is, but it's one I've been on before. So I get on it and I start driving. It turns out to be Route 80, which was about 20 miles south of where we took the underpass. And it's only been a few minutes. It's just incredible. So I get back on the, on, on Route 17 and I'm going back. By this time, the dad has seen us turn and he knew that we were right there and then we never reappeared so he's in his pickup truck standing in the bed of his pickup looking for us all this time the little boy has said nothing and he stopped trying to get out of the car though and the father is super skeptical he's about the community experience he's telling my son and his son don't believe Whitley he's 
completely, this is not possible, it can't happen. And so I'm sort of hoping the little boy will just keep his mouth shut about what just did happen. This is a fairly fantastic thing. I pull in, and he jumps out of the car, runs across the parking lot to his dad, yelling, Daddy, Daddy, Whitley just took me on a ride through the Twilight Zone. Oh, boy. <laughs> now, you figure that out. Wow. I can't. Wow. There we have it. Wow. You know, I stopped connecting dots a long time ago. <laughs> I didn't even bother to talk about parallel universes, parallel mm -hmm. realities, any of that. I have no idea how to explain the story I just told you. Wow. None. 